Here are the top five FPL players to avoid. Now, as an Arsenal fan, the first player does hurt me indeed because he's one of our own. It's Aaron Ramsdale. But there are a lot of problems with this pick, even though he's the third highest owned goalkeeper in the game at the moment. Now, first and foremost, it is a transfer rumour, but it's looking more and more likely that David Raya is going to join the club. And so that brings in Ramsdale's number one position into doubt. However, I've also based this decision on data. Now, a lot of people cite the so-called collapse of the club due to Saliba being out of the side. But actually, the defensive numbers of the team were falling before then. Looking at the numbers of the team, we kind of split the season into two halves, pre-World Cup, post-World Cup. Pre-World Cup, 0.78 goals per 90 were conceded by Arsenal and 1.33 per 90 after. Now, of course, Saliba wasn't there for a lot of that. So with Saliba in the team, when the restart happened between the restart and the 16th of March, Arsenal started averaging 1.07 goals per 90 conceded. So we can see that the numbers actually started to regress before Saliba was out in the league. Looking at the reasoning for this, the team were conceding a lot more from set pieces and open play, allowing higher quality opportunities. And we can measure this by XG conceded per 90 increasing and XG per shot increasing as well. Also, throughout the whole campaign, the Gunners were defensively vulnerable at home. The Emirates Stadium was a fortress in one sense that they played really well, lots of goals there. But they also had the joint fourth worst clean sheets at home last season, keeping just four in the league in the 2022-23 campaign. Now let's turn it on to Rhys James of Chelsea. And it's a sad situation because injuries are the reason why you probably shouldn't be investing in him. He's got so much quality about him. He is so brilliant when he's available. But the question is, when is he available? Over the last four seasons in the Premier League, the defender has averaged 19.490s per season, an availability rate of about 50%. This is not the type of asset that you want to own in FPL. You should be sweating over the fact if he will even play each week, not even if he will return. Also, there's no certainties that Chelsea will improve this season. The team were incredibly poor in the last campaign and despite spending over half a billion and another eye-watering about this summer, we cannot honestly say hand on heart whether the team has improved and if the squad is likely to perform. It's all up in the air at the moment. So there are a lot more reliables in his price tag in defence that I would say you could invest in in your teams. Now, Brian Umbermo has become a firm favourite in the FPL community. With the absence of Ivan Tony, people are looking at him as a potential out-of-position player. Looking at the stats, we can see why. The Bs are relatively good in attack with a top 8 XG, 7th for chances created, showing that those in their attack might have some high-quality chances to put away. However, I'm uncertain if Umbermo is the answer to the Ivan Tony question and if he should be in your FPL teams. Despite him being potentially out of position and despite him potentially being on penalties, his open play abilities are seriously lacking. To be blunt, he's a terrible finisher. In the 2021-22 season, Burma was the biggest underperformer on XG with a minus 5.11 XG underperformance. I believe that Maybe some of those 6.5 midfielders that we see around him, the Matomas, have that higher quality and ability that we have seen throughout the seasons. Plus, there is the massive unknown of how will Brentford play without talisman Ivan Tony. Now, this could be one of those terrible takes that might put me in the stratosphere as Rory Jennings, but I hope that my careful research has put me in a firm position to make this controversial point. I'm not that big of a fan of Bruno Fernandes in FPL. Even though Manchester United had a good streak last season after the World Cup, he was not the main star of the team during then. It was Marcus Rashford. And I believe that Rashford is a great option. He has shown his potential and his ability through those good fixtures. Whereas Fernandes was not on fire. You shouldn't be invested in Fernandes instead of Rashford, even though it saves you 0.5. Also, the double up just seems a little bit much 
because of the quality that we saw of Manchester United through last season. Now, a good run from game week 17 after the mess of the World Cup, I think papered over some of the serious lack of quality in the Manchester United squad. And I don't think that they've done enough this season in terms of transfers to be able to make arguments that they are that much better. Now, some people will point to the fact that Manchester United had a very high XG last season, but also they were one of the biggest underperformance in the league with a minus 14 XG underperformance. And we've seen Hoyland join the club with much acclaim, much excitement, and there is potential there. And he might be able to get the team a bit closer to matching their XG performances, which most elite teams should do. But his goal-scoring performances cannot be compared to the likes of Erling Haaland. And last season in the Serie A, he underperformed XG as well. So maybe his goal-scoring abilities will be good, but not great for Manchester United. And so this is the problem, is Fernandes is creating a lot, but there aren't people getting on to the end of the chances. His 4.77 points per 90 last season means that for the time being... I don't have much interest. And also Manchester United's collapse in their attacking output at the end of last season may be a point of how they will start this season. Often the best measure of teams of how they will start season is indicated by how they finished it. Leicester City is a great case in point. They had a fantastic season when they won the FA Cup, but were abysmal after then. And in the league, the FA Cup performance papered over that situation as well. They played really poorly at the end of that season and continued to get worse and worse. And unfortunately, they were relegated last season. Now, obviously, Manchester United are not on that level, but we have to bear in mind that they scored only 16 goals in their last 10 games last season, which was around the likes of Crystal Palace, Fulham, and West Ham. Not really good company to be keeping in terms of goal scoring. So Fernandes is a world-class player and he could prove us wrong, but I don't think Hoyland and Mason Mount's additions into the team are going to be enough to make Fernandes worth the investment. If you look at other players around his price point, there are a lot better options in a lot better attacks in the Premier League. Now, the final player is James Madison, and I swear to you, I am putting my Arsenal biases aside and looking at this one objectively. Now, part of this analysis is contingent on transfer rumour, but it does look more and more likely every day that Harry Kane is going to be leaving the club. And if he does leave Tottenham, I believe they'll struggle to get into the top half of the season. And therefore, I think James Madison is going to be redundant as an FPL asset. The fact of the matter is, is that Tottenham have been on the decline for a while, have been over-reliant on Harry Kane's goals, and this has seen them skate around mediocrity for quite a while. He was involved in over half their goals last season with 39 goal involvements in the Premier League from the team's 70 goals, and he's the main reason for their ability to overperform XG. He's chief architect. He had the most chances created in the team. He has the highest XA in the side, and obviously we know his goal-scoring abilities as well. He's integral to the team, and they'll be much, much, much worse off without him. Now, some Spurs fans believe that the Kane money will mean that the whole squad will be improved and so they perform better as a sum of their parts rather than an individual. However, we've seen in the past that Tottenham's hierarchy have an inability to buy well. Look at the Bell money fiasco or the Undombele fiasco or the Emerson Royale fiasco or the Richarlison fiasco. I could go on. But the reality of the fact is that the team is in dire need of investment back to front, the midfield, the defence, the attack, and also the heir to Harry Kane, Richarlison, because I doubt Tottenham are going to go in for another forward after spending £60 million on him last season. He's shown that he's not an elite finisher. We can't trust in him as well. So it genuinely feels like Spurs are on the cusp of not being an elite Premier League team anymore. It must be worrying for their fans. But the team themselves are going to be looking at teams below them rather than above, I feel, this season in terms of their competition.